Don't be fooled by her beauty because what you're looking at is the most evil and cruel princess in all of anime. She's Ira Von Tarantara, sole ruler of the Kingdom of Clapping. She wiped out her entire family just like my boy Itachi. The difference is she did it just to rule the world. All of her subjects are scared of her so no one dares to stop her tyranny, but we all know how that usually ends up. Anyway, she's destroyed the lives of too many people, and to top it all off, she's also a supreme sussy baka. Luckily, there's only one Chad that can save the world and alter the kingdom's destiny who goes by the name Theo Gospel. Now here's the catch, Theo was supposed to be an evil bishop but some poor Korean lad named Lee got reincarnated into this world after getting hit by Truck Kun, and now he's taken over the life of Theo. So it's been a year since he landed in this brand new world, and Theo has quickly risen up the royal ranks to become Ira's most trusted advisor. Today he's trying to convince Ira to not destroy a rebellious Lord Belmort since he knows if she does so, his and her life will be over soon enough as he knows how this story plays out because this world is a replica of a novel he used to love. Regardless, old man Belfort gets to live another day thanks to Theo trying to change the ending, and bro has something else up his sleeve. Turns out, Belfort's daughter Clara got captured by Theo's men the day before allowing him to have the upper hand to make sure Belfort does not attempt any funny business while sentenced to life in captivity within the castle walls. But Theo might be a little sus, because as you can tell, it looks like Clara got some advanced invisible clothes and don't think that attire is the norm in this kingdom. Nonetheless, Belfort's face go pale after seeing that Theo's trump card is his own daughter, causing Theo to chuckle inside knowing that he's the real power behind every royal decision. Suddenly, Era claps her hands in applause of Theo, making him snap back to reality, but the clapping might be foreshadowing something in the very near future. Mere seconds later, a menacing aura surrounds the evil queen and the first things out of her mouth is her asking Theo if his plan was to make Clara get rice cake destroyed by her father in front of everyone. Bro then takes a moment to really analyze what Ira just said because me personally, I did not expect her to say that either so she really do be an evil sussy queen. Anyways, bro is left speechless and unable to fathom what Ira got in her head because things escalated straight from 69 all the way to over 9,000 in just seconds. To make matters worse, she said it with so much confidence that everyone in the royal throne room heard her causing all of them to instantly think of plans on how to overthrow her rule because she ain't it, chief. Nonetheless, her eyes begin glowing red like a demon lord, so Theo face palms knowing he needs to be quick-witted or it's already game over today. As such, Theo activates Sip Mode and heads for the Queen, claiming that he has another very humble plan for Clara instead of very suspect father-daughter activities. After sneaking some compliments here and there, he's able to convince Queen Ira to make Clara a maid of the palace instead of forcing her to grab some milk from a very unwanting Belfort, so it's all a win-win scenario. Now that he's saved both his life and Ira from the entire country rebelling against them, Clara sheds some tears in front of Theo and curses him for his entire life. But if I was her, I'd rather be a maid than drink a milkshake by her dad. Fast forward an hour later, we discover Theo still by Ira's side, but she informs him to cancel every scheduled plan for the rest of the day because she feels too tired after trying to end the entire family bloodline of a noble house. She then turns around and whispers to our boy that tonight she's going to reward him for his deeds and for always being by her side no matter what. Unfortunately for Theo though, it looks like he already knows what the reward will be and he doesn't look too happy that the sussy fire nation is about to invade his life once again. As the queen's most trusted advisor, we discover that bro gets the job of being the one that helps her out when she wants to freshen up by being a bath boy. To help her out, Theo gets summoned right in front of her, but she's totally exposed like Jack Doherty and lets him see the entirety of her twin statues of liberty and let's just say she do be having some large g -yats. Bro then stares way too long, but it's not like this is the first time he's ever seen those puppies before so I Ra blushes uncontrollably whilst his lightning rod gets ready to strike from down under. But the turntables turn when Theo is given his reward, which turns out to be just him being able to help clean with the queen. So it seems he doesn't get to use his banana tree. Unable to turn his lightning rod into a battering ram built for the queen, he just stands there and scrubs the targeted areas to leave Ira squeaky clean. After completing his lame mission, she flashes him a look and orders Theo the time for phase 2 of the reward where he must eat her vanilla ice cream cone on the spot. Theo sighs knowing that he doesn't get anything in return, and this isn't something he would call a reward because it's a one-way street, but he just nods and does as what the queen wants. So with the queen enjoying his reward, Theo is busy thinking to himself how much he hates her, and she's just lucky he hasn't finished his plan of taming every princess in this world to do his bidding, including her. Regardless, with Ira sounding like a broken record that continually repeats the same sussy sounds over and over again, Theo gets visibly frustrated that he can't properly use his pepperoni to pork out on the Queen. 
But since he wants to keep his head, Theo tries his best to always make sure she hits her climax of the mountain but rest be assured, he's going to rule her world very soon. To do so, Theo plans to make Ira fall in love with his sussy skills, even though he hasn't gotten to unleash his banana sword on her dumpy to deliver the finishing blow, but for now he can use his Spider-Man skills to full effectiveness. Nonetheless, Theo continues to accept his reward graciously, so he's able to make Ira succumb to defeat twice with the use of only his fingertips, so just imagine what Bro can do when he unleashes the real weapon he's been hiding. Now that Ira got defeated twice in a row by Theo, she happily tells him he can make his leave as she's going to finish cleaning up by herself. After drying up like dried mangoes, she calls a sleepy Theo to help her brush her hair so it looks like he's the one that's being tamed right now, because this isn't what a normal royal advisor would do for their queen. However, as he brushes her hair to her liking, Theo takes this prime opportunity to privately ask her for a favor and jokes on us. The favor has nothing to do with being a sussy baka. It's then revealed with Ira's fury that he tried to convince her to add another advisor, but she took it the wrong way, making it seem like Theo wants to quit being her only trusted advisor. Upon seeing her look like she's about to rip him a new one, he retracts everything he said even though the only thing he asked for was an assistant because he can't handle everything she keeps asking him to do by himself. Now that it's clear she wants no one other than him by her side, Ira quickly drops a bomb on Theo and mentions how the royal expedition is returning tomorrow. Fast forward the next morning, Theo didn't have enough time to prepare for the expedition suddenly returning so he tries his best to keep his composure knowing full well that his life is on the line if things unexpectedly escalate. But much to his horror, the royal council gets interrupted by a female knight from the expedition who's still in full armor with battle axe in hand so it looks like trouble has found its way in. Sure enough, the crimson-haired warrior swiftly sent one of the lords of the council to the afterlife with one simple slice without saying anything. After breaking rules of royal conduct without any care in the world, she removes her helmet where we learn that she's Elda Von Lioness, or should I say Elda Von Batty, cousin to Ira and one of the princesses of the top noble houses. Eventually, Theo steps in and begrudgingly asks Elba to sheathe her weapon, but big props to our boy since I wouldn't want to speak up to someone that just came out of nowhere and clapped a council member without anyone stopping her. Unfortunately for Theo though, Elda feels insulted that someone just tried to tell her what to do so she whips out her giant battle axe again and aims right at him. But right before she's able to make Theo reincarnate to another world, Ira steps in and orders her to stop what she's doing but Elba just plays it off like it was just a prank bro. Fast forward to the evening, we find Theo looking like he's hating life because he's stuck at a banquet dedicated to Elga, and he happens to be the only dude there. Usually you'd be super happy if you found yourself stuck in a room full of girls and you're the only guy there. But it turns out all the girls here do not prefer boys, so he's stuck in an unlucky situation. To make his evening more worse, Elga ganks him out of nowhere and singles him out the entire time, so he's stuck doing what Elga wishes unless he wants to feel the wrath of the crimson blonde princess. After being forced to drink the entire night by Elga, the two make it to the courtyard where she continues to pester him and make fun of him for not being able to hold it in. However, the turntables turn when Elba changes the conversation and asks if the rumors of him having a special relationship with the Queen are true. Theo then pulls out an Oscar-worthy performance by making it look like he can't believe Elga would ask such a thing, so he vehemently denies it in front of Elda and turns it around on her. Bro then makes a good point to her that if he were to have a special relationship with Ira, then there's no way she would still be on the throne. After being reassured that he's not been secretly sticking a banana tree deep inside Ira's castle walls, the sussy turn tables turn when Elda whispers to him that it's just the two of them right now. She then tries to remind him of their good old times, hinting to the fact that these two have had a special bond before, so she orders him to go along with her request, making him look scared in the process. With Theo again speechless, he says nothing but Elba keeps yapping and ends up telling him to close his eyes as she's about to reward him for apparently advising her dear cousin Ira very well. Turns out, the only reason Theo looks scared is because he used to be a slave part of the lioness family, so he's afraid that this surprise might actually be torture so he braces for impact. But much to his surprise, the only torture he's going to feel is his lightsaber wanting to burst out of his pants since Elda ganks him with a kiss which isn't something that usually happens in the novel. Mere seconds later, Theo pulls off a big brain move and activates his sussy jutsu by returning the favor, so he directly attacks her twin pyramids of Giza while swapping personal liquids like no tomorrow. However, things got too spicy for the princess of the lioness family, so she pulls back like how I like my pulled pork and stumbles upon her words, not expecting Theo to suddenly become a chad out of nowhere. She then begins blushing profusely, so she has to look away to prevent Theo from seeing. 
But then, she orders him to never do something unexpected ever again unless he likes pineapple on his pizza like a true cultured person. To save her from embarrassment, she quickly changes the mood by whipping out a piece of an emblem and asks Theo if he knows anything about it since she got it from one of the savages she destroyed with one fell swoop. After taking a closer look at it, he realizes that the emblem looks like very elaborate handiwork, but he can't really tell what it is since it's been damaged a lot so he tells Elga he will try his best to find out what it really is. Fast forward to the middle of the night, Theo finds himself alone in a secret room within his quarters that contains a special scroll outlining everything that happens in the novel, since he wrote it all down to make sure he doesn't forget. Funnily enough, after writing everything you remember on the scroll, he forgot all the details a few days later so it's a godsend he didn't procrastinate or else his fate would have been totally different. The next thing that's coming up in this timeline is the hero's appearance but since he was able to stop Ira from being too tyrannical, he's altered the timeline. As such, he heads to bed trying to catch some Zs, but he knows full well that Theo is destined to get destroyed in the novel, so he's planning to make sure he can live as long as he can. The next morning, Bro gets awakened by Ira, who wants to bring him to go see the peasants in town, but he's totally frustrated because today is his day off, but she doesn't care at all. Nevertheless, Theo accompanies her to go visit a pub since she's heard rumors that a fairy works there and since she's never seen one in person before, she's super excited to see what they are like. Soon enough, a waitress approaches them to grab their order, but instead of grabbing some food, Ira pulls out a gold coin from her sleeve to entice her to bring out the so-called fairy. The waitress freaks out at the gold coin tip because that's equivalent to like a billion Robux, causing Theo to warn Ira to calm down because now, everyone is looking at them wondering who they are. Eventually, the busy fairy comes out who we discover happens to be the owner of the tavern, allowing Ira to finally get her fix of seeing a fairy face to face. However, as Ira happily plays around the existence of the fairy, owner shifts her gaze towards Theo and casually tells him that his mere presence is very bothersome due to his bloodline. Unsure of what she truly meant, Bro just shrugs it off and next thing, he knows a couple hours has passed by and now he's got to take care of the queen once again since she drank too much at the tavern. After Ira gets placed to rest on his bed, she pulls him close and orders him not to leave her, spilling the beans that she just wants to sleep together tonight. Mere seconds later, after Theo blinks once, he realizes that the queen was able to effortlessly remove every part of her armor without his help where she then proceeded to motion to him to come close. Upon getting close, she orders him to remove everything ASAP. With no other choice, he follows the orders of his queen, but much to his surprise, she invokes Article 69, allowing her to quickly grab his banana light saber. Now to make it clear, at this point Ira has never really dealt with someone's lightning rod, so her curiosity gets the better of her causing her to just eat up the entire Italian sausage. The swallowing sound is now music to Theo's ears so he almost cries, unable to believe that it actually happened, that Ira actually returned the favor so he never thought he would still be alive when that day came. Unsure of what to do next, Theo makes the foolish mistake of telling Ira to stop what she's doing. But this causes her to take it personally like Mamba mentality because no one ever orders her what to do. It's Jover now for Theo since the queen abruptly stops returning the favor. Instead, she stares directly into his soul and proceeds to skill gap him by grabbing his lightsaber with both hands and informs him that she will only let go if he answers her questions truthfully. First, she asks about his past life and how he ended up part of the lioness family as a slave because she doesn't really know him that well even though he knows everything about her. Now, literally stuck in a sticky situation, he tells her a sob story that he was taken in by the church since he was an orphan when he was a child, hence the last name Gospel, but he ended up getting sold to the lioness family later on. After telling her his entire life story before she was able to buy him out, Ira lets go of his prince behemoth and successfully baits him, but Brogue is worried when she spreads her wings right in front of him. In an instant, Theo's chili hot dog surpasses levels he never thought was possible after seeing the royal flaps on the bird, so Ira tells him she's going to give him a reward for telling the truth. 